Hey guys, what's up? By uh, Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with my next video, and this one's gonna be a little bit different than most. I'm talking about 10 tips for clans that are engaging in high-level wars, and these are tips for the strategy uh, of the war. So not as much the attacks themselves, I have a whole mini tip series for that, but more of how to use your attacks, what types of bases should be hitting what. So this will apply mostly to clans that have Town Hall uh, 11s, Town Hall 10s, Town Hall 9s, and some Town Hall 8s possibly. Uh, kind of this similar to Genesis, maybe a little lower, uh, but just in kind of that range that you see for most of the, the war clans at the high level. So these are great tips that your leaders can look into, or if you're just trying to help your clan plan things out a little better for the war, I think you guys will find this very helpful. So I have 10 tips uh, for you guys today, and just so you know, I'll probably have a base, uh, a live base build video coming out, and possibly uh, a live on war day with one hive genesis just so you guys know what's coming up because i want to uh, keep the variety on the channel so look forward to that stuff coming out over the next few days but today we're going to be talking about 10 tips uh, for your clan is in terms of strategy in tough wars and these apply mostly to when the, it's pretty evenly matched although they can apply to when you're you know overmatched or undermatched if it's a mismatch in some sense because they're pretty general stuff that i think applies to most matchups so let's get right into the action guys and the first one actually, funny enough, applies to the attack you're seeing right now because this is a Town Hall 9 that just hit a Town Hall 11. And Town Hall 11s keep your Town Hall on the inside. There's just no reason to, to have it, especially if you're one of the top Town Hall 11s, there's no reason to have it uh, even close to the outside of your base because then you're opening yourself up for a Town Hall 9 attack. You want to force the other clan, if they just want to two-star your base, to use a Town Hall 10 attack. Um, and if your Town Hall is close to the outside, there's a chance a Town Hall 9 could two-star it. But as long as your Town Hall is pretty central and you have a somewhat good base design, uh, it's going to be very difficult for a Town Hall 9 to two-star you. So just keep that in mind. There's no reason to uh, let the Town Hall 9 uh, have a chance at that. And also, we're not seeing that many three-star attempts at Town Hall 11, so it's not not like having the town hall on the inside is going to cost you a three star really it doesn't make that much of a difference really for your base um and even still, if it does, uh, I don't think it'll you know be the deciding factor or anything. So keep those town halls on the inside if you're a town hall 11. The next one is related to troll Teslas, and I know I've made videos on this. I've always said this, but really, you should one in three of your town hall nines should be using a troll Tesla, in my opinion, at this point in the game. And I know it's not the cleanest way to defend. Um, it's a little bit scrappy, uh, a little bit cheap, I guess, in some sense, but it works. And I think that. If you do it enough, then people start to, like on a fresh Town Hall 9 attack, they'll start to wonder if it's there. It'll get in their head. They might even bring a balloon in anticipation of it. Um, so they're, they're, they're just going to be, um, it's going to be screwing with them. And uh, I think even if they are suspecting it, it always can throw them off. And I think they don't know what corner it's going to be in. I mean, I guess you could have up to two troll Teslas if you're that much of a troll, like on opposite sides of the map. But I think at Town Hall 9, defending against one attack is like awesome if you can do that. So I, because of that, it makes it easier for the second attack. But at that point, your job is pretty much already done. Anything after one attack is just a bonus. So keep those troll Teslas on about 30%, 35% uh, of your bases, in my opinion. Moving on to number three. Uh, I would say have your Town Hall 10s that have low-level heroes, have those guys hit your uh, hit the Town Hall 11s on the other side. And I say that because you want your Town Hall 10s with high-level heroes being the ones doing the three-star attempts. Because in, at this point in the game, it's harder to three-star, in my opinion, it's harder to three-star a Town Hall 10 than it is to two-star a Town Hall 11 if you're a Town Hall 10. Because of that... Um, Give that slight advantage of having higher level heroes. Give that to your guys attempting three stars and have your guys with maybe, you know, 35, 30, 35, 35 even. Have those guys hit the Town Hall uh, 11s and have your 40, 40 guys hit your Town Hall 10s. I think you'll find that'll be more successful. Moving on to number four. Um, one sec, real, real quick. Okay, uh, you're going to have to use dip attacks usually if you're in a if you're in a war that has town hall 11s you're almost always going to have to use dip attacks that's kind of what works that's what gets the most town hall 10 three stars is when a town hall 11 comes down so when you know that's going to happen in your war 
Don't even bother hitting that base with a Town Hall 10 or even with a Town Hall 9 because a good Town Hall 11 uh, should be able at this point in the game to fresh 3-star a Town Hall 10 no matter what level the base is because they are that one Town Hall level higher. They have the Grand Warden. They have the uh, higher level troops. They should be able to 3-star on a fresh hit. And, you know, if your clan's not at that point, maybe do a scout on it. But if you're really trying to be efficient with your attacks, save the top Town Hall 10 bases, leave them for your Town Hall 11s, and uh, if, if they're, you know, solid players, they should be able to get the job done, get those Town Hall 10s fresh 3-starred. Uh, next tip, I think this is number 5. Yeah, number 5, it looks like. Uh, the Town Hall 9 scouts... Uh, typically, you want to wait till all Town Hall 9 bases are 3 starred, but you can, um, even if some Town Hall 9 bases on the other side are still left up, you can start doing scouts on Town Hall 10 bases uh, with your Town Hall 9 attacks. Because if you do the math and you say, hey, we have 10 Town Hall 9 attacks for only 2 bases, there's no way both of those bases are going to eat up 5 attacks each. So, you know, have a few, you know, two or three of those Town Hall 9 attacks. Let them uh, try to take out or try to scout a few Town Hall 10 bases ahead of time. That way you give your, your hi uh, higher level players more time to plan. Otherwise, it's kind of a, a log jam because uh, they're waiting for scouts. They can't plan until they know where everything is. It just pushes the time frame back for everything. So if you can kind of infer and make a reasonable judgment that you're going to get the Town Hall 9 uh, cleaned up, uh, you can go ahead and use a few attacks to scout ahead of time and get that done early in the war. Next one is if you have Town Hall 8s, as far as what they, their scouting should do, they should you know, be hitting in the first four hours of war if they can. Get those Town Hall 8s 3 start as soon as possible because you want your Town Hall 8 at eight scouts to be on Town Hall 9 bases. I say that because I don't think a Town Hall 8 has enough firepower to truly scout a Town Hall 10 base. I think it's better spent scouting the top Town Hall 9 bases to ensure those are fresh hits. And one more thing I will add to that is because you're getting a scout, you can even have some of your low, lower level hero guys attack the top Town Hall 9 bases if there's a Town Hall 8 scout, because that makes it so much easier than fresh 3-starring a Town Hall 9 base that's maybe a little bit lower level. So keep that in mind. Town Hall 8 attacks, um, those scouts should typically be on the Town Hall 9 bases. Um, I would stay away from doing Town Hall 8 scouts on anything higher than Town Hall 9, because at that point it gets difficult to even reveal all the traps and do a full scout. But, you know, it's up to you. Whatever you, whatever you guys think your Town Hall 8s are capable of, I just think that, you know, I haven't seen many Town Hall 8s, but I just don't think they have the firepower to do a good scout on one of the top bases for Town Hall 10 or Town Hall 11. Uh, let's see, number 7 is there is an advantage to waiting towards the end of the war to use your attacks. That's why you might see um, in some of the videos I've done, the people in Genesis, the Town Hall 11s, the top guys, are saving their attacks to like the last minute uh, to do. And the, the reasoning behind that is whichever clan, like let's say the other clan uses all their attacks, now we know exactly how many stars we need. And based off that, we can make uh, reasonable judgment, judgments as far as what bases to hit. So there's an advantage to going... Uh, to waiting with your attacks and seeing what they do because sometimes you know you see okay they're doing really well they've gotten all these bases three starred we have to take some risks we have to try to three star these bases that maybe we wouldn't typically have planned on doing and it goes the other way too if they're not doing if they're not having that good of a war then you can play it safer maybe go for some percentage or something and uh, just go for two stars in some of the top bases whatever it takes to win the war so there is an advantage to waiting. You don't want to wait too long. Like, you don't want to miss an attack because you waited. But if your Town Hall 11s are, you know, reliable, have them wait till pretty deep into the end of the war. It'll give them a better idea of what's needed from them. Uh, number 8, or, yeah, number 8. This one goes hand-in-hand hand with number 7. Uh... If it's, if it's a sure thing attack, get it done as, to, as soon as possible. And by sure thing, I mean if you know that that attack has to happen no matter what, get it done. If you have a Town Hall 10 base that needs to be 3 starred, you know that. Even with, the town, even with the enemy still having a lot of attacks left, go ahead and get that attack done. Um, that helps make it easier for the people that are waiting, that have depend, dependent attacks, that are hinged on what the other clan does. It makes it easier for those guys because you get the rest of the attacks out of the way, which simplify, simplifies things a little bit. So any attack that's kind of a sure thing, you got to get that base 3 starred, you got to get that base 2 starred, whatever, you know that's the case. Get those attacks done. Uh, wait on only the attacks that are dependent on how the other clan does. Uh, let's see, we got two more, looks like, 9 and 10. Last two tips for you guys. 
Um, low level Town Hall 10s, I said they should also uh, be hitting the Town the town Hall 11s for 2 stars. Well, in addition to that, I would recommend that the low level Town Hall 10s in terms of their hero level and possibly troop level, those are the guys, this might be kind of obvious, those are the guys that should be cleaning up Town Hall 9s. And I say that because even though it's a little bit obvious, clans can still screw that up and you end up having a guy with 40-40 heroes uh, cleaning up a Town Hall 9 base. So obviously, you know, especially with all of these tips really, uh, availability is a big factor. Sometimes you can't afford to have people wait around to make sure all the Town Hall 9s are cleared. But if you can, uh, in general, the people with the low level heroes, with the 30, 35 heroes, uh, whatever's the lowest, I guess, for your Town Hall 10s, save those attacks to clean up the Town Hall 9s because they should be able to easily destroy it, uh, especially with that fifth spell, no matter what their hero levels are. So save the low level Town Hall 9 attacks and use the high level 40, 40 heroes or anything else that's similar to that. Use those attacks for the actual Town Hall 10 bases where you need them uh, to try to get the three star there. All right, last tip for today. Uh, when in doubt, stars over percentage. And this one might be a little bit controversial, but I think that percentage is often overrated in a sense. People often are too worried about percentage on the top bases, whereas you don't know it's going to be a tie. You have to you know, go hard for percentage. And if it's a tie, it's a tie. Sometimes you can predict it'll be a tie based on how things are turning out. But a lot of the time, uh, a clan might find themselves not being able to tie up the war because they went for percentage. And I just think that it's really crucial to stress percentage, uh, or st sorry, stress stars over percentage. Get the stars. Then if you have, you know, the luxury of trying to get high percentage in the top bases, go for that. And keep that in mind, you know, maybe you want to use one Town Hall 11 attack uh, early in the war on the other Town Hall 11 to get a lot of percentage on it because you know it'll probably be tied. But in a lot of wars, you don't know if it's going to be tied or what. And we don't see ties that often, to be honest. Typically, it comes down to stars. So f worry about stars. Percentage should be kind of on the back burner, although it is something to keep in mind if you do think you might tie, especially in an arranged war. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hope these tips helped. And like I said, we'll be getting back to a probably a live base build and a live on war day with one have Genesis. And then following up that, we'll have the weekend uh, for some of the celebration videos, along with some other stuff. So stay tuned. There's going to be some cool stuff on the channel. And just had the first day of school today, actually, was was cool. Uh, everything went fine. So thanks for watching, like I said, once more, one more time. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, Sectatron out.